Okay, I'm going to make another Christmas ornament, and I have just enough time to make one. And a couple weeks ago, I made this one with three sides. And most people uh, are familiar with four-sided inside-out turnings, but not much more past that. So yes, you can make one with three windows. And these same pieces can be stacked to make a six-sided one with six windows. That's what we're going to do today. I haven't made one, but I know using the math, they'll all stack up and I can get them glued together and do it. My saw is still tilted from when I made this one, and I used the digital angle finder to do it. It's a very accurate way. Let's go ahead and cut the pieces to make a six-sided one, and then I'll show you why they stack up either direction. So let me get a dust mask on and we'll start cutting these pieces. Okay, I cut the pieces shorter. I now have three pieces of walnut, three pieces of European beech. I'm going to show you why you can use that same angle. If I use three pieces, this angle here is 120 degrees. Three of those makes 360, so that completes it. If I want to use six, I'm using this angle. This is 60, so six of those makes 360. Let me show you how that works. Alright, I'm just going to hold them like this. You'll see it better when I glue it. But that's the complete shape right there. 360 degrees. I'll go ahead and get these glued together temporarily so we can turn the inside shape. I put a couple of rubber bands on these, one on each end, just so I could check the joints, and they look good. Now it was time to go ahead and take them apart, and I was going to use my brown paper and glue joints, and because there's six pieces and they're going to try to squirm around, I'm going to try something a little bit different. i not done it before, but I'm pretty sure it'll work. I can reach right in here and get a dab of hot glue in that intersection. Now when you use hot glue, you want to get it as hot as it can get to do the job. This is going to hold this quite well. I will also use the packaging tape on it. And this is just for the first part of the turning here. And this, is, this is the extra strong hot glue that I have here. Either one, I think, would work. There, that was much easier than my little pieces of cardboard, which I cut some up, but I don't want to do it that way. I want to try this. I always like to try something to better what I'm doing. So, hopefully this works good. I've got it between centers, and I put the strapping tape on it. I'm going to start my cut right about here. And because all of these corners are fairly fragile, I just resharpened my half inch bowl gouge and just going to start cutting the shape in it and see what happens. Turning around 1000 RPM, maybe I'll kick it up to about 1100. That's close. 
Yes. Let me get a short piece to show you what the window should look like. This will work. A little popsicle stick. If you look down right there, that should be half of our window. Maybe you can see it better on this piece. So that's the shape I'm really concentrating on. That's all I'm going to take off there. This will start to get real thin here when we flip it around. It's actually pretty smooth. I don't have any uh, chips over there, so I'm going to uh, use my negative rake scraper just to refine that a little bit. Okay, I'm going to sand it in reverse at about maybe 500 RPM, starting with 150. Okay, we're all sanded up to 400. We use some sanding sealer, and this is a shellac based. It's a Zinsser seal coat. A couple of coats of this on, and we'll see how well that hot glue comes loose, and we'll get it glued together the opposite direction. Okay, so I've got everything I need here to try to get these apart. I get the tape off first. So what usually works good is to get some denatured alcohol on the hot glue and it'll cut right through it and loosen it up. Probably just let that sit for a few minutes. All right, they sort of just kind of fell apart once I pulled on them. I wanted to show you that a number of the tips. So when we flip them around, we'll just flip them around right in their same spot with the numbers pointing inwards. I'll clean the rest of the hot glue off that's on there and I'll be right back. Looks good. So now I'm going to use these little hose clamps just to tighten them up. That looks pretty nice. All right, I've got it in the lathe in between centers. And so we're going to go ahead and round this up. And I'll get a tenon on this end so I can get it in the chuck. I'll be using my spindle roughing gouge at about 1100 RPM.
Okay, I put a mark on the end here, so I'll go ahead and use the parting tool and cut that tenon. Okay, I've got it in the chuck and it's running nice and true. I've got a little wooden cup center that I have threaded to fit on the end of my live center. This will support it while I turn the rest of that back to the half inch bowl gouge and we'll be turning around 1100 RPM. I'm going to go ahead and get this sanded up right here, and then I'll decide what I'm going to do. Okay, here's my plan. I have a little cup center here that I've had for a while, and it's got 1x8 threads. I also have an adapter right here that goes from one and a quarter to 1 inch. So I put that in, screwed this on here, put the turning up against there, Find that at center, make sure it's sitting nice and even, let's test it, and it runs really true. So guess what, we're going to use hot glue to hold this in while I turn that off, and I'll still be able to do the final tip on it. About a thousand RPM. Yeah, I'm going to put a little denatured alcohol on those drops of glue. Peels off like that. I put these other ones on and let it sit for a couple of minutes before I showed you. But that's it. It came off. But it wasn't going to come off when I was turning. I need to sand these areas here and I would just as soon go sit down and do that. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'll come back and we'll put a coat of wipe on poly on this. Alright, I got it all sanded to 400 and I'm going to use the Minwax wipe on poly clear satin. Yeah, I like that. Alright, 
I'll probably get about three coats of this on there. It'll look just like that. And then I'll come back and we should be done. Well, here it is. It's all done. And I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Sure was a lot of fun to make. It's made out of six staves. There's three walnut and three beech. And like I said, I use the Minwax Wipe On Poly because the oil-based poly will put a little bit of tint in the wood, which it did. I really like the contrast. This is about six and a quarter inches tall and three and a half at the widest diameter. And the windows can vary on depending on, of course, the shape and how deep you cut the inside part. And I like, I like this a lot. I had a couple pieces left over and I went ahead, glued them together off camera and turned this one. So it's same concept, same wood, but I used the spray-on lacquer and that's the difference in, in the colors there. I like this better than this, but I still like this. This one's four and a half inches tall and three inches in diameter. So I think they both make nice little ornaments. But this is the one you got to see turned. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, do me a favor and click that like button. And while you're there, it would be great if you could share the video around. Those two things will really help my channel grow. Leave a comment. I read them all and I do my best to answer them all. Thanks to all my subscribers. And if you're not, please consider doing so. I do a mix of all types of turnings. Some are simple and some are complex. So let me know your favorite. Thanks again. And until the next time, see you later.